I know, I know, this is a tech news channel, but it's a tech news channel with really great audio. I mean, I have always been a sucker for really good sounding audio, more specifically, dialogue. In fact, I would probably go as far as to argue that audio was more important to video than video is to itself. Now, listen, I'm no production expert, right? Again, I just host a tech news show and make loud noises on the internet. But I do know that if you're just recording raw audio and then you're not processing it afterwards, you're just sort of uploading that, dude, you're doing it wrong. A little over a year ago, I released a video called How to Make Your Voice Sound Perfect for Video. And you know what? It helped a ton of people. And it was also shared a bunch by Adobe, literally themselves. Since then, though, I have changed my process up quite a bit, so I figured, why not share it with you? Okay, so here's this. This is just raw audio, right? I'm recording this directly from my microphone, and this is what most creators just sort of live with. But this is what it sounds like. Same microphone if you just take some time to process the audio and give it a little TLC. Before you record anything, it's important to go into this with the right mindset. Like, you can't have a recording of like a total dumpster fire and then come to me and use the steps I'm about to give you to sort of magically fix it all because, honey, that is not gonna happen. It literally all starts off with the recording. First of all, let's talk about your mic. You absolutely do not, I repeat, do not need to be using the most expensive microphone on the planet. In fact, you would be pretty shocked with what you can do with the more sort of budget-friendly microphones on the market. You just need to be using the right mic and recording in the right way. For example, a lot of people complain that there's too much reverb in their audio, like you can hear too much of the room, too much echo going on in the recording itself. And most of the time that's caused because they're actually using the wrong type of microphone. They're using a condenser microphone instead of using a dynamic microphone. Now, don't get me wrong, I love condenser microphones, they're amazing, I'm using one right now. Like, on a physical level, they are able to capture more frequency range of the human voice. But they're also more sensitive. For podcasting or streaming or really anywhere where you're able to get the microphone physically closer to your mouth without it totally ruining the video, 98% of the time, I would recommend using a dynamic microphone over a condenser microphone. Unless you have like a totally sound treated room, you've got acoustic foam everywhere, you're most likely going to be served better by using a dynamic microphone. You would be shocked by how much better they are at capturing your voice and rejecting a lot of that room noise that you hate so much. Also, a cool bonus, most of the time, dynamic microphones, less expensive than condenser microphones. If you're interested, I'll leave links to a few of them down below. Whatever mic you choose to use, just make sure to get it as close to you as possible. The cleaner, more detailed the audio is, the easier it's going to be to work with in post. Also, record much quieter than you usually do. This is a really, really common mistake. People just record with their audio levels set way, way too hot. So when they start to get a little louder than usual, or maybe they even yell, then the audio automatically peaks and distorts and it's unusable. We want to record quieter than we usually would because we'll fix the volume thing later. Right now, we just want to make sure there's enough room to work with it in post. So if you're recording into an external recorder like I do, or you're recording into a PC, or maybe you're recording directly into the camera, either way, Make sure you set your audio levels to where, on average, you're hitting negative 15 to negative 12 dB. Set everything up, get your mic nice and close, and just start talking at the volume that you're going to when you do start recording. And check those audio levels. Make sure they're hitting that negative 15, negative 12 dB sweet spot. Once that hot mess is recorded, let's jump into post. Uh, in this case, I'm going to be using Adobe Audition, but honestly, most of these tips will work just as fine in other audio processing apps. We're gonna start off with noise reduction. So if you've got a slight hiss or rumble in the audio, this will easily knock most of that out. But listen, let's be realistic. We can't work miracles here. So first of all, find a spot in the audio where there's literally nothing but that noise that you wanna try to remove. You can drag to select it and then hit Shift or Command P to capture the noise print. This will tell Audition that this is the awful noise that you wanna get rid of. Then jump into Effects, then Noise Reduction, then noise reduction like the actual process and from there just play around with the settings until you're happy of course you can just use the settings that i have here too but be careful if you go too aggressive with the noise reduction 
it's going to be really obvious. Things will start to sound tinny and you'll be able to hear that digital artifacting happening in the processing. These days, I actually use a paid VST3 plugin for noise reduction called NS1. And honestly, it's incredible at intelligently and adaptively removing all noise that is not dialogue. So, hey, if you want to spend money, NS1, totally worth it. Next, let's go ahead and EQ or equalize your audio. We all sound different, right? So the mics that we use are meant to be somewhat universal. They're meant to just capture a flat profile of your voice, just a raw recording, nothing special. And yes, there are mics that do sound better than others, but honestly, you never know the true potential of a microphone until you EQ it. In addition, I use the Graphic Equalizer, 20 bands, and the Parametric Equalizer. I use the Graphic EQ to play with the highs and midtones of my voice and the Parametric EQ to adjust the bass of my voice. Once again, go ahead and play around with your settings to see what sounds best with your voice. Generally speaking though, the 150 hertz area is like the lower, more fundamental part of the voice. For reference though, when we're talking about specifically the male voice, it usually doesn't go lower than 100 hertz. You can find sort of the more nasally part of your voice towards 1000 hertz. Then the real presence of your voice you'll find around 5000 hertz usually. You can really play around with that to sort of make everything sound brighter. And the sibilance part or the S sound, the S sound, is usually found around the 7000 hertz range. But listen, you don't want to get too crazy with this. I know a lot of you, your very first instinct is going to be to crank up that bass, make it all sound real, real bassy and real full, but take it easy there, killer. We still want this thing to sound natural, and if you go too far, it's going to be real easy to tell. We just want to add some fullness and detail to your voice. And hey, again, if you're lazy, you can just try my settings here and see if they work for you. Once again, nowadays I use a paid plugin uh, for EQing. Uh, it's called Q10. It's from Waves. And again, you totally get what you pay for here. It's fantastic. Now to the most important part, in my opinion, compressing and normalizing. Come on, be honest with me. How many videos have you watched where you're constantly adjusting the volume? Some stuff in the video is like super loud and some stuff is super quiet. Ah, yes, the true sign of an amateur. If you want to sound like a pro, let's balance this stuff out. We want to make sure everything sounds consistent. Let's compress first. So you're going to head up to effects, then to amplitude and compression and then let's click on the single band compressor. From there, set your threshold to negative 15 dB. You will notice if you're playing along at home that that is the sweet spot that we recorded at. Set your ratio to 12, um, attack to zero milliseconds, and then set your release to 150 milliseconds. I find that's usually the best for human dialogue as opposed to cat dialogue, I don't know. And then leave your output gain at zero. We're gonna take care of that next. You'll notice now that your waveforms are much more evened out and consistent throughout the whole track. If you have any Rebel waveforms sticking out, go ahead and get in there and manually fix that. At this point though, obviously your audio is way too quiet, so we're gonna fix that by normalizing it. Effectively, the goal here is to boost all the waveforms and get the entire track up to a normal or standard level. In this case, we'll go to effects, then amplitude and compression, and then to normalize. For online content, like on YouTube and such, we're going to normalize to negative three dB, and that'll pretty much get you squared away. These days, yes, once again, I use another paid plugin actually for both compressing and for normalizing. If you're interested, it's called the L1 Ultra Maximizer, also from Waves, and it is absolutely incredible. The links to all the plugins I use, I'll put that stuff down in the description. So there you go, and hey, props to you for wanting to give your audio a little bit extra love. For some reason, so many creators just overlook this. I don't know why, but you are a noob no longer. So congratulations to you. And of course, let me know, did this help you out? Find me uh, on Twitter or in the comments or subscribe or I'll just leave.